Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we would like to demonstrate the proper installation procedures for the Lovejoy standard jaw and shear spacer coupling. This installation video will show the basic procedures for installing this coupling. Please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy coupling installation guide when performing the installation of this coupling. This document can be found online at Lovejoy's website under installation instructions utilizing the resource tab. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout tagout procedure defined by OSHA. The jaw and shear spacer coupling is ideal for use where a coupling is required to span a gap between shaft ends that exceeds the normal width of a jaw coupling spider. The jaw and shear spacer coupling also provides an excellent non-lubricated drop-in replacement for the grid style spacer coupling where the shaft separation measures 3.5 inches, 5 inches, 7 inches, or even 9 inches for some larger size couplings. The following are components that are provided with the purchase of your Lovejoy jaw and shear style spacer coupling. You should have two grid style shaft hubs, two jaw and shear spacer assemblies, a urethane spider, and a retaining ring or collar. The spacer assembly consists of a jaw hub and a spacer adapter. You will also have hex head bolts for fastening the spacer assembly to the shaft hubs. Always inspect the components to ensure the parts are the proper parts that you ordered and review your application details to ensure that this is the proper coupling to accommodate your application requirements. If the shaft and the hub both have keyways, make sure you have the appropriate key ready to use when performing this installation. Ideally, the key should be the same length or slightly longer than the hub to transmit the maximum allowable torque. It is always recommended to keep a copy of the specific coupling installation guide readily available when installing your Lovejoy coupling. The installation guide contains charts that show the necessary details including allowable coupling misalignment and torque settings for tightening the set screws and bolts. Some installation guides may contain performance and dimensional information, important when confirming the accuracy of the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A straight edge, a dial indicator, calibrated torque wrench, Allen socket to fit the set screws, hex head sockets for the spacer hub screws, a vernier caliper, a micrometer to confirm the shaft sizes, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, lockout tagout kit, safety glasses, and rubberized gloves. Even though we have disconnected the power to this system, it is always a good idea to check and ensure that the power is off. When you receive the coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure that there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping. You may want to check the bore size for accuracy prior to continuing with the installation. If not done already, you should measure the shaft and ensure that the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Then inspect the shaft and clean up any nicks or burrs from the keyway or shaft diameter. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. The emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and keyway are clean and free of dirt. The hub should also be cleaned to remove any coatings used to protect them during shipping. Before installing the hub, place the key in the keyway on the shaft. The key should fit snugly into the keyway with no side to side movement. The end of the key should line up with both the end of the shaft and the hub. Please note that the Lovejoy jaw and shear spacer shaft hubs are manufactured with a clearance or slip fit and the hub should slide onto the shafts with little or no difficulty. 
The spacer hubs have a slight pilot surface sticking out from the face of the hub. This pilot is designed to help maintain concentricity with the spacer assembly and will fit snugly into the mating pilot or recess in the spacer assembly. When installing the hub, line up this pilot surface with the end of the shaft and the key. The use of a torque wrench is important. If the set screws are not tightened properly, the hub could work loose and slide on the shaft. If the set screws are too tight, they could damage the key, the shaft, or the hub. We will tighten the set screw in one hub to the required torque and the second we will lightly tighten to allow for a minor adjustment after the equipment is moved into place. Lovejoy ships the spacer assemblies with the jaw hubs already mounted on the adapters. There is no reason to take these assemblies apart. Hold one of the adapters against the shaft hub, lining up the pilot of the adapter to fit over the shaft hub pilot. Install the mounting bolts to hold the assembly in place and tighten these bolts hand tight. Slide the retaining ring over this spacer assembly before installing the assembly on the other shaft. Next install the spacer assembly on the second shaft and again tighten the mounting bolts hand tight. Measure the gap between the face of the hubs to ensure the gap width matches the G or gap dimension listed in the installation guide. Because the equipment should already be in position, it would be easier to move a hub and spacer assembly on the shaft to adjust for any minor discrepancy in the gap. This should be done on the side that has not yet been tightened down with a torque wrench. Once the gap dimension has been confirmed, use the torque wrench and tighten the set screws on the second shaft hub. Then tighten the mounting bolts to the torque specified in the installation guide using the industry standard procedure of tightening all bolts in a crisscross pattern, first to 50% of the specified torque, then 75%, then to the finished torque. We will check the coupling alignment prior to installing the spider. Lay a straight edge across the hubs to check the basic alignment. The offset between the two hubs should be less than 1 32nd of an inch to prevent damage to the coupling. The angular difference between the two hubs should be less than 2 degrees for the jaw and shear spider. If the alignment exceeds the allowable amount, you will need to realign the equipment to correct this condition. If using a dial indicator, mount the indicator on the driver's shaft with the sensor touching the jaw hub on the opposite shaft. Rotate the shaft with the indicator to the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock positions and make notes of the deviation on the dial. If this exceeds 1 32nd to 3 seconds of an inch, depending on the coupling size, then adjust the equipment to correct this condition. Next we will wrap the spider around the hubs interlacing the legs of the spider between the coupling jaws. Slide the collar over the spider by guiding one of the pins in the side of the collar through a slot in the spider. The pins in the ring should slide through the slot and the collar should completely cover the spider. Then turn the ring until the pin moves past the raised dots on the side of the spider. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to meet specifications, remove the tooling and material away from the shafting and coupling. Double check the set screw tightness with a calibrated torque wrench, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. The equipment can then be started up and tested. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. If vibration is detected, it could indicate that there is an issue with alignment or other problems. These could exist in the motor, coupling, or driven equipment and should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video. We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630-852-0500. Lovejoy. 
building trust since 1900.